Good morning, guys. We are still in Perth, one of the most isolated cities in the world. The closest city to Perth is Adelaide. That's 2,100 kilometers away. We are so isolated out here in Western Australia, which is why probably why most Western Australians feel like they are like the forgotten Australians. So one of the main things to do out here in uh, Rockingham, there's an island just off the coast of Shoalwater called Penguin Island. And when it's low tide, you can walk there. Low tide was at four in the morning, about 10 to eight right now. I know I'm gonna be fine. I'm a pretty strong swimmer, but it's more leg that I'm worried about. So I think it's good to take a little precaution and get her a little floaty. So maybe this, this will do the trick. Yeah, these things are supposed to stay afloat. It kind of scares me that people have drowned doing this crossing. So maybe I could just like take this thing, grab some of this rope and just tie it around the lane. Okay, safety first. Here's your floaty. Well, I'm gonna just do this and hope that if uh, the wind, if I get knocked over, I don't let it go. Just hold on to that thing for dear life. Those yellow buoys out there, those are indicators for windsurfers and boats to let them know that they're approaching a shallow sandbar. This is our route where it says danger. Yeah, 700 meters. Uh-huh, uh-huh, fall in a hole. But it's low tide and I gave like a floaty. So the water should like, shouldn't even go up past our waist. Shouldn't, that's the key word there, shouldn't. You have your safety device. Not attached to me, yeah. You're sure about the tide times? Yeah. You want me to go ahead? And what? And then you follow me? Okay. Yeah, this might be a bit too deep. I barely left the shore and I'm already like waist deep, so I don't know about this for Lake who doesn't know how to swim. I really hope there's no stingrays out here. It really is windy though, and those look like some scary storm clouds up ahead. I mean, if it stays like this the whole time, it's not bad. The wind isn't gonna die down, so there's a lot of wind swell that's pushing us. You don't wanna have those type of conditions when you're traversing 700 meters. The wind is a huge factor, because the swell can push you off course. So you might think you're on the sad, sad bar, but then you might wander off the end. And, so I'm gonna head back. We're gonna do this another day. Another day, Penguin Island, but not today. Mm -hmm. All right, so we've just jumped into the future by about three months. <laughs> um, that last bit where we were trying to cross the water, that was at the end of November, and we're now end of February, and Ling and I are actually leaving Perth in like three days. Penguin Island has been on the list and we've just been putting it off. And especially when you're nomadic and traveling and backpacking, all those things that you've been putting off, you can't put off any longer because you might never get another chance to do whatever that excursion is. So today, that excursion is Penguin Island. We're not gonna walk across the sandbar. It's killed people, as I mentioned uh, three months ago. So we got our ferry tickets. So do you hop between like the visitor center and the island? No, I just finished early today. Oh, okay. But, but usually, I, so I'm just going out. I know, I walk like maybe a couple of feet out and it was already up to my waist and I'm like, yeah. oh, I thought it would be a lot shallower than that. I when I go swimming around here, it's, the, it's just a drag is coming through here. Mm -hmm. mm. Just like really strong drag. So. Oh, right. Yeah, the ferry is way more comfortable. Three months later, we finally made it to Penguin Island. On a staff ferry. On a staff ferry, wow, VIP. <laughs> Way more comfortable to take the ferry. I think I made it like as far as here. That doesn't matter, that's neither here nor there. We are here. 
finally in Penguin Island. Oh, go inside. Oh. Let's go uh, jump in this uh, water and uh, see what we could find. Hey. Oh shit, my phone's in my pocket. <gasps> I'm playing with fire now. Really, the excuse is because I want an iPhone. This guy that I followed posted a really awesome video of his trip to Angkor Wat and he filmed it entirely on his iPhone. It looked insane. Okay, let's go look for some shacks. Oh, I'm so not a fan of all this sea grass touching me. to the feeding. This one was a munted beak. Cute little blues, little blue penguins. Endangered, that's crazy, eh? 2,500 to 150, that is drastic. You can't call it Penguin Island if there's no penguins on it. We're gonna walk around the island and see uh, what else we can uh, see here. <laughs> that was refreshing. And that's what I saw. A blue mana. Now I know his name. Uh, apparently we gotta dance to get on this boat. Hey Lingo dance. <laughs>
There you have it folks, three months in the making, but we finally made it to Penguin Island and it was worth the wait. A great day trip if ever you find yourself in Perth, more specifically Rockingham, which is about 40 minutes south of the Perth CBD. We're finally gonna lift the anchor and get back out on the road. Thanks guys for watching and I'll see you next week on next week's video. Amen to that. Perth, you are amazing. It's sad to leave. This was truly a great home and uh, made a lot of, well, not many friends, I guess, but I had some cool colleagues, you know, Luke was awesome. No. <laughs> Eating your bickies and all no. that. Got very familiar and very comfortable here, but um, it would be a waste if we spent any more time here and uh, sacrifice seeing all the other great things that Australia has to offer. Peace out, take care, and... Um, Bye. Yeah, what Ling said. Stop talking. <laughs>